Sunday of Easter. It's from the Acts of the Apostles, the 20th chapter, beginning of the 17th verse. Now, from Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance towards God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock, in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Here ends the first reading. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The second reading is from the Lord's Revelation to St. John, the seventh chapter, beginning with the ninth verse. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. 
for the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends the second reading. us. 
He feeds us his word. That's how he cares for the flock, by keeping us gathered together around his word. As long as we hear the word of God, the Bible read in class, in Sunday school, in church, or at home, that's the good shepherd gathering us, calling us, feeding us, and protecting us. Of course, if we get away from God's word, we get away from Christ. We get away from our good shepherd. And if that happens, then we are fair game for the devil. But thanks be to God. He feeds you, he strengthens you, and again, he gathers you here. What a wonderful thing to be fed by the Lord himself. Because again, when you hear the word, that's exactly what's happening. And what wonderful words of gospel from our Lord Jesus. The devil can't get you when you're in his flock. When you are a sheep of God, one of his lambs, you are protected. Protected from that old evil foe, the enemy. And remember this as well. Do little sheep decide that they want to become sheep? No. They're born that way. You see, we who are born in sin, however, have been called by Christ. He has named you as his own and declared you to be his own sheep and part of his flock. Not something that we do, but something that God has done for us. And that's where we recognize the blessing of God's gifts in what he does for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Father in heaven, we give thanks to you that you have called and gathered us, enlightened us through the preaching of your gospel, through the, through the giving of your Holy Spirit, so that we might have faith to believe your holy word. We thank you that you have snatched us from the hands of our enemy, and you hold us safely in your hands. We thank you, Lord, that you have died on the cross, the Lamb of God, sacrificed for our sins, that we might receive eternal life in your name and fed by your holy word. In Jesus' name, amen.
No one could tell just by looking at the man from Nazareth hanging dead on the tree of the cross, crucified and condemned between two criminals. He was anything but a criminal himself. To the unbelieving eye, Jesus was just another victim of Rome's harsh system of justice. No one, not even the disciples themselves, could use their normal physical sight to see that this beaten, bloody man was also the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. What they saw was nothing but death and defeat. Not good turn. Instead, we learn to believe what Jesus has done, not by sight, but by hearing and believing the words which he spoke. And dear Christians, it's no different for us when we come to the third article of the Creed. Even as we confess, I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. Notice that we do not say, I see one holy Christian and apostolic church. No, even though we see the building and the people gathered here to sit in the pews, little children coming forward to hear God's word, we don't see the church using our normal sight to see God's little flock. Because even the church, that is the people who have been called by the Father to believe in his name, is an object of faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the preaching of Christ. In other words, we may not look like Christians on the outside, or we may look like Christians and not, in fact, be Christians if we don't believe the word that God has given to us. In fact, if you rely on your eyes, your normal physical sight, to see the church as she appears in these last days, you'll be sorely disappointed in what you see. Shrinking flocks. People that don't look or act much like followers of Christ. But don't despair. This is pretty much the way Christ's flock of sheep has always appeared. Because what you will see, unfortunately, when you look at the church is often a train wreck, a disaster. Sinful people gathered together, not always appearing as righteous as they in fact are in the eyes of the Lord. Because to normalize, the church is and appears to be a scattered flock. Because the church is visibly fractured in the form of hundreds of competing denominations. Even the churches bearing the name Lutheran have shattered the dozens of fragmented church bodies, often confessing different things, many denying the inerrancy of God's holy word and embracing a wide variety of worship styles and practices which often deny our confession. And sadly, it seems that the church is often competing with one another, each claiming to have the quarter on the market of the truth of God's word. Unfortunately, the church has even been tainted by the sins of her priests and pastors as fierce wolves from within and without have attempted to twist God's word and scatter the flock into unbelief following after the teachings of men rather than the teaching of Christ. Sadly, in recent years, the church seems more intent on following the ways of marketing, Wall Street, and the world, seeking the ways of men to call and gather the flock, listening to the enticing proposals of man's way of feeding the sheep rather than simply heeding the words of her shepherd. It's tempting to follow after the transient, temporary things of this world, rather than the eternal, everlasting word, which the Lord uses to lead his church into the green pastures and the good food which he offers his sheep through word and sacrament alone. But thankfully, in the midst of her struggles, in the midst of this time of tribulation as the body of Christ, his church, and his bride struggles against the sins and temptations of this world and the flesh. Our Lord's church, his flock, can still hear her shepherd today. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So thanks be to God 
For as dirty and smelly and sinful as the sheep appear, our shepherd does not abandon us. Like sheep who have gone astray, the Lord seeks out his own and comes to them. In fact, his whole incarnation is about exactly that. Coming to seek and to save the lost. To gather his flock together through the word. Even as the Lord spoke to the prophet Isaiah, saying, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Comforting words of gospel from the prophet. And because us sheep have such a hard time seeing, our Lord continues to call to us through his word so that we can hear and follow and know the truth and be set free and receive eternal life by his leading. Because that is where he leads his flock, from death to life, from sin to forgiveness. For where there is the forgiveness of sins, just as we confess, there you have life and salvation. And where is that forgiveness to be found? Where the sheep are gathered around his word, at the font and at the altar. Because while the church might not look like much to those who see it from outside, just dirty, smelly, sinful people, the church that is the righteous ones who have been called by Christ will always be found where the shepherd's voice is heard, where the gospel is preached for our salvation. Luther understood well the meaning to the Lord's words found here in St. John's Gospel. In the small column article, a statement of faith which he prepared to present to the Pope, he wrote, Thank God! A seven-year-old child knows what the church is, namely the holy believers and the lambs who hear the voice of their shepherd. For even the children pray, I believe in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. Even little children know that this holiness does not come from albs and tantras, long gowns and other ceremonies, but rather they come and are made up without, with the Holy Scripture, without which there would be no true faith. What a beautiful way Dr. Luther had of getting to the heart of the thing. His words clearly confess our belief that the Lord's flock of believing sheep is not found in any one denomination claiming to be the visible church. But rather, we rejoice that the Lord has called those who are his own to gather around him wherever the gospel is preached and his sacraments are administered according to his institution. Because having heard and followed our shepherd's voice, we see that the church is consisting of the holy believers, the little sheep who hear the voice of their good shepherd, the ones who hear and follow the voice of the one who says to them, I'm the good shepherd. You can't come to the Father except through me. My words are the words of eternal life. I am the good shepherd who lays down my life for the sheep. The sheep are the ones who hear the voice of Jesus when he says, I lay down my life for you so that you might live with me forever. I washed you from your sin in the still living waters of holy baptism. I lead you to the green pastures of my forgiveness where you can lie down and rest in my tender mercy, which I have spoken to you so that you know your sins are forgiven. I also spread a table for you in the presence of my enemy, says our Lord. Here's my presence, my cup of life and salvation given for you. A cup of goodness and mercy so that you can taste and see that the Lord is good. Because here is where you'll find the gathered flock of Christ's holy Christian church. Not only here, of course, but certainly here where the word of his truth is preached and proclaimed. Gather here through holy baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because it is in those waters, just as the scriptures say, that the sheep are cleaned up, our grimy sins washed away, and Christ's holy church made and gathered in his name. Because we remember, we, the sheep, need to hear that holy absolution, because we have wandered away. Often tempted by sin, giving in to sin, we need to know that those sins have been forgiven, so that our guilt and shame would be relieved. For we who hear and believe are nothing less than the holy flock of Christ. Because our good shepherd has taken away the filthy rags of our good works, which we would rely on if we could, 
He takes away those filthy rags which have been stained by our sins and doubt and unbelief. Instead, he gives us his righteousness. It's like a robe that is put on us, which has been washed clean in his blood and made righteous by his sacrifice. Because of what our Lord says and does, we do not look to the things of man to see or find the church. And we don't judge the sheep and his flock on how rich or poor, large or small it appears to be, or even how well the sheep behave. Rather, we see the church as God's holy flock of believing sheep who is found united around word and sacrament. Because the unity and the holiness of the church is being found in the hands of the good shepherd himself who will not let you go. Of course, this is the great comfort for us to know that no one, not even the devil himself, can snatch you away from the eternal life that has been won for you by your good shepherd who has laid down his life for you. But a relief to hear again and again that despite our sins, despite how we might look to others, because of what our one and only Savior has done for us, we're saved. Because He has called and gathered us by His Holy Spirit. The one who went to the cross, died, and rose again to forgive us our sins so that we might have life eternal in His name alone. For through Him, there is only one washing by which our sins are removed and we are made part of the flock. There is only one gospel which is to be preached, which brings you the good news of your salvation through his sacrifice. There is only one medicine for sin-sick souls, which is given out from the only table which feeds his flock with his own body and blood and bread and wine. Therefore, fellow beloved sheep, when you are tempted to feel discouraged about the church in general, or even what you see closer to home, in our own little flock or in your families, just close your eyes and listen. And do as Luther once suggested. Take your eyeballs out and put them in your ears. Don't trust what you see, but trust what God speaks to you. Because when you hear the voice of your good shepherd speaking to you through his word, when you believe that word, you are part of the flock the holy, Christian, truly apostolic church. These are truly the Lord's. Because even though we often have difficulty seeing the truth of God's word on account of our sins, we are comforted by what that word teaches us. When Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Those are the very words of Christ which we Hear, believe, live, die, and live again by. So the church on earth and in heaven rejoices, praising God, saying, Blessing and glory and honor and power and might be to our God and the Lamb forever and ever. For all He's done for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.